Hello, today we're going to be work going over the Striker 2024 model. It's a STG 3313, and we will be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Uh, basically, your one switch here is going to be your light switch, so you can turn on and off, if you, or you had to hook up at night. The other one here, so you can extend and retract the, the camper. This is how you get on and off the tow vehicle. This is also how you level the camper from front to back. I do always like to recommend that while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're level from side to side first. Uh, we do like to recommend a carpenter's level right inside the doorway, but they have these stick on levels that can be stuck on on the camper as well. Once you are good from side to side, then you're gonna unhook from the tow vehicle and level front to back. For the side to side, you may have to put a couple blocks down and roll onto them. Once you've done that, then you'll lower your stabilizer jacks located on the, this side of the coach, they are motorized. So basically you got your extend and retract. Basically you'll lower those guys down. You'll hear the change in the sound of the motor when they hit ground and started adding pressure to them. Next, we're gonna have our two 30 pound tanks. These guys have both been filled, minus what we use to test the propane system with. But then this guy back here is gonna be your regulator. Basically, it regulates the amount of propane coming into the coach, but this got a little window here that'll tell you when the tank is empty as well, like a little red flash card will kind of be there showing you it's empty. This guy here shows you what tank you're using. Basically, I'll turn this guy on. That should go to more clear. But once this tank is empty, it would show red. This is designed to where if you have both tanks on, once the one tank is empty, it will start drawing from the other tank. This model is also set up to where if you have it down in the middle, but both tanks are on, it will pull from both tanks at the same time. We always like to recommend just having one tank on at a time. The reason for that is so that way you at least know when one of these canisters are empty. Back behind that's where our battery is gonna be located, just a 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. And then that guy that says the volt right there, that's basically where your battery dis disconnect is gonna be located. You're gonna be using that whenever you're storing the camper. So that way if anything was left on, it won't drain the battery on you. Next, we're gonna come on the side. Your bedroom slide here is a Schwinn Tech slide. One thing that has to be noted about these guys, these are to never be lubricated. If they start looking like they're getting dirty or anything like that inside, it's recommended that you just use soap and water to scrub these guys down and then rinse them off. Never lubricate those guys. And these guys basically work on two independent motors. That's why you don't want to lubricate them so that way they communicate with each other. Underneath here is where our generator is going to be located. It does have a magnet so when the slide room is closed it can actually hang open. But inside this guy here, you got the nice little 5500 generator. So whenever you go to start using this guy here, you got your start and prime button or stop and prime and your start. When generally most times if you ain't used this guy in a while, you will have to try to prime that guy up. And I'll just kind of kind of start hearing that sound and then you it'll keep clicking until it doesn't really click anymore it's telling you that it's primed up and then you would hit that start button to fire it up and then these are the two breakers for that guy usually whenever you, you get this going it does usually take anywhere between 90 to 280 seconds for it to actually kick in and start powering up the coach next this is going to be where you would fill your fresh water tank Pretty much it's gravity fed, you just stick the hose in and let it fill. Do like to recommend that you do read the monitor panel inside for when it reads full, you know, to shut that water off. You don't want to wait for that water to start shooting back out at you. Uh, over time, that can cause damage to both the outside and inside this area here. <clears throat> Next, you got an outside sprayer right here. Different couple of options there, so you can be able to wash your, your toy. This is just cold water though. This guy here, you have to twist to release. It's got two little notches on it that it goes in there to lock it into place. Always be careful though when you mess with these guys. Sometimes this piece here will start to loose up on you. Uh, and then you go to turn it, you know, it'll start shooting water out of here. You just gotta make sure it's pretty snug and tight. I've seen it happen numerous times. Next, you're gonna have your city water hookup. Uh, basically with this guy here, you wanna make sure that you have a 
pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. From there, you'll be able to hook up to this. You'll be able to start using the cold side of the water right away. You do have to wait for the water heater to heat up before you can start using the hot side. And then, of course, you gotta wait for that hot water to get hot before it's, hot, uh, it's actually hot water. Next is gonna be your black tank flushes. This caution sticker here. This caution sticker is to make sure that the valve handles on the black tanks are in the open position. For this one right up front here is right here. And I only have that partially halfway out. Go ahead and open up that. That's gonna be fully open. Basically, you would have your sewer hose hooked up to this and you'll start dumping the tank. From there, you're gonna get yourself, I always recommend having a black hose, black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. I do like to also say it doesn't hurt to use a pressure regulator on this as well because there's a plastic check valve on the back side of this that can get damaged if the water pressure is too strong. But from there, you're gonna hook up your hose and start flushing the tank. Basically, you'll see when the water starts coming out clear, it's kind of saying, that, hey, it's been pretty rinsed out. I've seen some people that close that handle for just a couple of minutes, kind of let some of that water slosh around in there a little bit and then open it up again to drain. Once you are done with your flush, you're gonna turn it off at the spigot and unhook the hose from the spigot. The reason for that is because on the back side of these, there is a hose that goes to that check valve, but you don't know how long that hose is. But there was no pressure to push that water through, so it's gotta escape somewhere. I recommend unhooking it from that end so it drains out that side instead of draining out all over here. While we're looking at these, this guy right here is basically gonna be for the front one here. Your main, your main toilet. And then this other one on the right side is going to be for the, uh, pretty much your toy hauler section of the toilet, which is located in the back. Oh, I gotta backtrack for just a second here. Right over here, and I got it tucked back in there a little bit, is where your gray tank handle is located. Pretty much that's for the bathroom sink and shower. Watch your head, there is a little clearance, even for short people. Right underneath here is where your drain's gonna be for the fresh water tank. It's nice, it's just a pull handle and it's gonna really dump that water out. It's like a two inch opening there. So it's really gonna drain that fresh water tank really quickly. I would open it and show you, but then I'm gonna get soaked in water because I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to rush out of there that quickly because well, I'm a fat guy. <laughs> uh, next, these guys here are going to be basically your vents for the fridge. Um, it is a gas and electric op model. Um, you do want to make sure uh, you don't try to block these so it can properly breathe. The only thing you would really do is you would pop this off to maybe check for mud dauber nests, things like that, wash, um, so that because they can obscure from proper breathing. Um, during the hot summer months, it will seem like this guy is struggling to try to keep things cold. One thing that you can actually do with these guys is if you have a ladder, you can take both of these guys off. So instead of the airflow just being through these slotted vents right here, through these slots, this is now your airflow opening. Big difference. So it'll help try to keep that fridge to maintain those hotter days in the summertime. And I have seen people use uh, dryer sheets to try and deter the wasp and stuff from getting in here. All right, so since we can kind of see the tires here, basically with these guys, you wanna make sure the tires are torqued to 100 foot pounds. And this is where we're gonna talk about what we like to call the over aggressive sticker. This guy here says that you want to check your lug nuts at 10, 25, and 50 miles. It's over aggressive. I always like to recommend that you should check them at 50, 100, and 200 miles. But another thing that you can also do is a lot of times when you're leaving a campsite, the first place we're stopping is the gas station to refuel up on the way home. We well, can knock out two birds with one stone. While you're refueling, you can check the lug nuts. Even when you're traveling home, you might have to stop at a gas station a couple times on your way home, depending, depending on how far you travel. Once again, two birds, one stone. Go ahead and check them while you're refueling. Makes it nice and simple. You also do want to try to keep these guys topped off to their max PSI level, which 
with the Goodyear's, they actually put it in a nice big lettering for you on the side that they are 80 PSI. This guy up here is going to be one of your vents. You're going to have one on the other side of the coach on the bottom. This is so you can open those so if you have your toys in there, the uh, gas fumes or if there were exhaust fume build up in there possibly, they're able to vent. Next you got your satellite and cable hookup. Pretty much if you have a satellite dish or dome, you hook up to this side here. It's got its own connection inside. If you're using a park cable, you do hook up to this side. You do have to turn off the TV antenna booster inside, and I will show you where that's located once we have stepped inside. Back here is the drain for the back toilet, which is going to be the black handle. This gray tank on this side is for the bathroom sink and kitchen sink. And this is a little clear elbow that comes with your sewer hose. It just helps us drain the water a lot easier to the drain. So that does not come with the coach. It was never there. Poof, and it's gone. <laughs> uh, your camper is a 50 amp camper. Cord does come with the coach. This here is where you would fill up the gas tank basically for the generator, and if you wanted to fill up your, your toys, like your motorcycle or side-by-side, -side, this is where this guy's gonna fill here. The tank is basically right underneath here, and the tank does say it should hold about 30 gallons. I will be honest with you, I have seen a couple of these when they have been filled, it does not take a full 30 gallons, so I'm just gonna let you be aware of that now, that sometimes it won't take that whole 30. This guy here is gonna be where you can lower the spare tire. Oh, up top there is gonna be what they call the on-the-go uh, ladder. So it's a telescope ladder that'll telescope up. It's got two hooks. The hooks to that so you can get up there and inspect your roof. It is recommended that you should inspect your roof every 90 to 120 days. Basically, you're just looking to make sure that uh, driving this guy during the, down the road during the summertime that it hasn't softened that sealant and created air bubbles or after a few years it'll start drying out and cracking when that happens you just want to try to clean that area and put some new lap sealant over there pop those air bubbles make sure you get some sealant in those holes and does that ladder come with the camper it does not not one of those little aftermarket things they like to get you with all right so then next you're going to have basically your party deck area slash ramp these guys here just kind of flip around There is, there is some stickers that says it is danger because it is a heavy door. But then basically this guy will come down. And then you'll be ready to set your your uh, your deck part up here. Down here. You're going to unhook this guy here. And I believe our other bungee is right here. I almost feel like I'm missing another bungee. There's so many. Uh, and this guy here is just gonna, you're gonna bring it out like so, lift and twist. And this guy slides basically right in this area, oh, and lock, slides in and locks into place. Do the same thing to the other side, and then this is your lock to lock that in for your party deck. So back here on this back corner here, you got these guys right here. So this here will actually just slide into this little bracket that's here on the back side. Kind of fills in this voided area for you. Then you also got this strap here that will secure up there to try to help hold this in place. And then it hooks on right here during travel. You also do got your, uh, your doors there. They slide open, they'll even pop open. Uh, all right, we'll go ahead and leave this open for now so I can try to show you these doors. We do got some birds in our area here, so I've been trying not to open it and leave it open because, well, we know what birds like to do. All right, if you come around the other side, here's that other vent I was telling you about. This is going to be for your rear stabilizers. This here is where you would be able to refill your toy. 
pretty much comes with the gas gas pump. So when you go to turn this guy on and it's got a QR code right here that you can scan, so you can give you the, basically the instructions for this. But basically when you go to push this off button, you gotta, you're waking up the system. Then you're gonna press and hold it again until it starts flashing the off and on. And then from there, you're able to turn it on. Then from there, you're able to fill up your toy. Nice thing about this is when you turn it off, it's got a reverse. What it does is it reverses the pump and it actually sucks all the gasoline back into the tanks and there ain't being no gas left in the hose. It's actually a very nice feature. And then you basically also turned it off already. You do have a key to light camper, so the one key will operate all the locks for this guy. Got your door here for the back toy hauler part. These steps here, they're basically real simple. It even tells you pull here to open. Just gonna pull that guy out, pull the guy out, and you're done. Nice and simple. Your front ones are gonna be the same exact way as well. Next, we got our water heater. So with the water heater, it says gas and electric. For the electric side, that's gonna be located right down here. You got your on and off switch. For the gas side, it's gonna be located on the control panel inside. Whenever you are done camping, you do want to make sure you get all the water out of the camper. To do so, basically, you would pull this guy to relieve the pressure, and then you're going to remove this down here. This is going to be a 1 and 1 16th socket, and this is what you call the anno rod. This guy is to be inspected when you're pulling it out. Basically, what it's doing is it's attracting the impurities in the water, so it's attacking the rod and not the tank because it is a steel tank. So you do want to inspect this guy. It starts out the size of a dime and will work itself down the size of a coat hanger. Once it gets start to a certain point, that's when you want to replace it. You got the nice size water heater as well. I've, this is the 10 gallon one. Uh, so it does take a little longer to fill. It does take a little longer to heat up, uh, but you are going to be able to at least get a little longer shower out of it. Next, you got your furnace. Pretty much your intake and exhaust. Uh, and it says right here, you don't want to block these guys like this. You're not trying to cover them. We do like to recommend getting mud diver screens. Pretty much it goes right over these guys, like a couple of eyeballs, but keeps the, the wasps and the mud divers out there from creating nests that can create issues down the road when you're trying to use your furnace. You do have an outside outlet here that's DFCI protected. And you're also gonna see this sticker on certain outlets around your coach. We're gonna talk a little more about that in just a second once we get towards the front of the coach over here. Uh, next, as you see, we got our outside kitchen area here. You got your TV, which we'll go over the TV for uh, scanning for channels and stuff like that once we have stepped inside. But this guy does come out and it pivots and turns. Then you got your outside sink here. This guy is a quick connect. Basically, you wanna make sure you push this down push it in there, lock it in, and then give it a snug. And then from there, you're able to turn your water on. Nice to have a little water in there. And then whenever you're done, this guy comes right on out and you're able to drain it. Next, you're gonna have your grill or griddle. Uh, for this, it's already pretty much connected on the back side here and it hooks up down below. And this guy right here, another quick connect fitting. I always like to recommend once it's locked in, go ahead and pull it on a lip, make sure it is locked in tight. From there, you're gonna turn this guy down here at the bottom to allow that propane flow to come through. But it also locks this so it couldn't potentially come undone as well. And then from there, you'll be ready to go start your grill. I'm gonna turn that off, watch your head camera lady. Thank you. And then once you've got it going, basically from there, you go like this, it's got a spark igniter. It usually takes a couple of times before it would actually light. This here is where your grease trap catch is. I actually got your griddle up front still wrapped in the, in the uh, parchment paper to help keep it protected. And that would sit right on top. You always do make sure you would lock these guys in on both sides so it isn't rocking around while you're cooking or anything like that. Whenever you're going to go and bring it in, you're going to unhook those guys. Make sure this guy's unhooked. 
that will always happen. So make sure you either got some tiles with you or some paper tiles. And then this guy would slide in and then you got a lock on front here that will lock in on the lower, on the lower piece here. I just got that water there so I don't want to push it in. But once this is in, it will lock. Once you get this lock, you do have to make sure that you push this piece down uh, so that way it won't damage your door up top. You do got two outside speakers there. Um, I will show you guys those once we have stepped inside. I meant to turn the radio on and did not. And then we got our mini fridge here. It's pretty much a 110. There is, you just plug it in and it automatically comes on whenever you uh, hook up the sure power. Then we're gonna go ahead and come over here to this guy over here. Inside here is gonna be your manual crank here, uh, basically for your spare tire and to bring the slide room in. Not your bedroom slide, uh, your main slide. This other one here is for the stabilizer, so if something happened to the motors, you still have a way to bring them up. This is our griddle here. This here is going to be your solar control panel. Basically, it monitors the battery and allows the surge from the panels to go through to charge the battery when they need it. Nice thing they actually did is they actually uh, added a solar panel disconnect. So basically, you can disconnect that signal from coming through just by churning this and pulling it out. Uh, basically, whenever you're hooked to sure power, you wouldn't need that, so you could just pull this out. Uh, basically, that guy's good for usefulness when you're boondock camping uh, or just trying to help charge the battery. Other than that, when you're plugged in, you don't need that. This here is for an aftermarket tire and monitoring system. And then you got your light out here that does have a USB hookup. All right, so I showed you that sticker on that outlet. Inside the coach, there are other outlets as well. What that is basically set up for is that they you can get an aftermarket inverter. It's already pre-prepped for it. You put that inverter in and then all the, basically all those outlets that have that sticker on it, you're able to use off the solar panels basically. Uh, so that's it's meant for boondock camping. So you're out there, you're gonna wanna be able to watch TV or you wanna be able to do some things. Uh, you're able to put that inverter in. Just note though, the more stuff you're using on 12 volt system wise, um, the more power it's going to take from the battery. Sometimes the solar, the panels can struggle to keep up with that. Uh, if that's something that you're going to end up in doing and over time is at that inverter, I would honestly recommend trying to upgrade the batteries to a better quality batteries, uh, either like the AGMs or a lithium. Um, and I would honestly lead towards more of the lithium style. It does cost a little more for it, but you're going to get the more better life out of the battery for those guys. Uh, your screen door basically here, this releases the screen door and this closes so the boats can get inside. This guy here, so you're going to be able to lock your deadbolt from the inside. You got a hook up here to keep the door secured. Let's see, I left that over here. And it. Me and Keith sometimes are not the best of friends. Uh, I am with you. So your door handle. Basically with this guy, you turn the key to the right and it locks just the door handle and you're able to pull that key out. Get in there. For your deadbolt, you turn it to the left. You'll hear a click. It shows that you locked the deadbolt, but you're also unable to pull that key out. You have to pull the key straight up and down to pull the key out. If you turn it to the right thinking you locked your deadbolt, but you're able to pull that key out, it shows you did not lock your deadbolt. Alright. So I'm going to have my camera lady swing around for me right here before we step inside. It's just easier to show you our control panel from down here. You do have your fire extinguisher here right by your door. Just show you that real quick right there. But then you got your control panel basically to tell you the status of your uh, battery. Then you got your fresh tank, which I still got water in that guy. Black tank one, black tank two, gray one, and gray two. Where's it at? I even wrote it down for you guys, so you know which which but which one is which. Black one is main toilet, black two is rear, gray one is main bathroom sink and shower, and then gray two is kitchen and rear bathroom sink. From next, then you got your water pump. Basically, if you're using the fresh water tank, 
you would use the pump. This is gonna be for the gas side for your water heater. Then you got your cabin lights, which is just the inside here. Your auxiliary light, which, uh, now I gotta start remembering what all my lights were. You got your cap lights, your porch light, which is up there, your awning lights, and auxiliary light here. This auxiliary light is gonna be for your back party deck lights. And your other auxiliary light is for the side lights that's on the side of the coach. This auxiliary switch here is gonna be for red lights under the coach. So there's actually some red LED lights underneath the coach. There's that one okay. Next you got slide room one, which is gonna be your main slide. Slide room two is the bedroom slide. Uh, we'll show you that bedroom slide when we're done. Like I said, it runs on two independent motors that communicate with each other. So you'll be able to hear those guys. So they, so you kind of got a general idea of what it sounds like. And then this guy here, so you can bring your awning in and out. This guy is not the fastest guy in the world. I just want to bring it out here far enough to show you. And there's a sticker here, basically. This is an adjustable pitch arm, so you're able to push this, pull this down, and it'll create a pitch on your awning. All right, so please note that these guys are actually supposed to be meant as a shade protectant, and they should be brought in basically anytime the camper is not being occupied or attended. The reason for that is because you never know when a pop-up storm may come. Strong enough winds can damage both the awning and the camper if you are not careful. All right, we will now step on the inside. And we'll show you this real quick here. So I left this sticker on here. So they no longer are putting a manual for the camper itself in here, uh, but basically, Another QR code, you scan that, put in the camper information, and it gives you basically like a PDF file for a manual for your camper. Next, you're gonna have the bathroom right here. You got your light switch for on and off. This here is gonna be for your fan. Nice thing is, is this one is motorized to raise and lower it, and then turn it on. Then we're gonna have our toilet. So you always wanna make sure there's some water in there. So you can do your business all the way down it's going to flush you always want to make sure water's left in the bowl of the toilet so that way the seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle but i would like to recommend when you first go to use the toilets you want to at least put a gallon of water in the tank and then you're either going to use a liquid chemical or a pouch if you're using the liquid chemical you can go one two or you can buy a two ounce shot glass you can keep in the medicine cabinet but basically, it treats up to a 40-gallon tank. But you're going to do that every time when you first start to use it. You ain't got to use it every time you're going to the bathroom. Just the first time you're getting ready to use it. From there, you're good to go. If you're going to use the pouch, I do like to recommend that you put water in the bowl of the toilet. Put that pouch in and see that pouch dissolve. I have seen it where pouches have not dissolved. Okay? Got a 110 outlet here. As you see, it's got that sticker on it. And you got your sink, your medicine cabinet. Down below here is going to be some storage. But I also have this open down here because this is where you would winterize your coach. So there's a valve right there that you would churn. This guy right here. And it goes to this hose right here. Basically, this goes into your jugs and antifreeze. And then you're going to use the water pump to winterize your coach. You do have to bypass the water heater when you go to do that. And that's going to be located in the back bathroom. I'll show you that once we have gotten there. Then next we're going to have our shower. Uh, basically with your shower, you got the shower head up there. Well, it's got that knob. Right now it's in an open position. You turn it to either the left or the right. It reduces and stops the flow of water. Uh, so that way you can try to get the most out of the water heater. Most water heaters are usually six gallons. The least thing is you got the 10 gallons you're getting a little better life but one thing you got to notice the average american uses 38 gallons of just hot water alone when they're taking a shower 
So you're already fighting the losing battle. All right, from there, we're able to slide right into this back to the bed, main bedroom. You do have this guy here where you can be able to shut off the bathroom so someone else is trying to use it. Right above the top here is going to be where you can hook up for your TV, and it's got an area right here where you can mount your TV. Uh, do note, though, the bigger TVs, you got to make sure there's going to be clearance for your uh, nice little guy right there. Then you got your closet. Hopefully you're, you're super tall, so you can reach all the way to the back to grab your shirt. Or have a super tall friend. Or have a super tall friend. And they do give you a mirror. Basically, this is a cover for the blanket. Or a bl the cover for the bed. <laughs> Good man. Excuse me. Uh, you got some storage shelving up top here. And then you got your shelves down below for storing as well. A little ambiance thing. You can set some knickknacks on if you want. Make sure you put Velcro on the bottom so they ain't falling all over the place. You do get a 110 outlet on each side. You do also get a USB. But then you also have a docking little station. Pretty much put your phone right on there. And it'll start charges. charging your phone. Cool. Apparently my phone's pretty dead. It says it's going to take an hour. <laughs> so next you do have individual reader lights. And each one of these lights actually has the USB hookups on these guys. So you can be able to plug your phone in and charge your phones as well. You do got the fire exit window that is on a hinge. So if you had to get out because you couldn't make your way to the door, you're able to get out. The tab's there so you can try to pull the screen out. But I'd rather you just go right through the screen just to get out. Just, you know, you pop the door. Pretty much you just pop this guy open. It's on a hinge. You also do got storage up above. Whenever you do got to bring this slide room in, you do have to flip the mattress up. You pretty much put that guy in there. Uh, this guy will basically come in almost quite a bit of ways here. Down below is the, uh, where you could be able to start and stop the generator from the inside as well. And then we do have our light switch for the bedroom. Oh, and you do also have another vent fan in there as well. Uh, that one is partially opened at this time because I put uh, four vent covers on this guy this morning. Uh, so they're still partially opened. And there's a reason for that because as you see, they're not in the uh, greatest of locations. Um, I will say the only one in the coach that is motorized is, is the, the bathroom. bathroom. All your other ones are manual, 15 feet high in the air. Go, no, go I'm gadget arms. I'm just imagining 15 feet. Go, go gadget arms. Go, go gadget arms. Let's turn that down so I ain't trying to talk over that guy. We're going to talk about him in just a minute. We ain't <laughs> made our way there yet. Uh, next, we got our pretty much our uh, couch area. You do got two lights up top. Nice thing about these guys, they recline. You got little handles here that you pull. One there, one here for the center as well, and then one on the other end. These are actually really nice. You sit in this guy, and you should be able to kick back and relax. Now, what I mean by relax is you really are able to kick back and relax because this nice feature, this model here of uh, sofas, actually comes with a USB hookup. I'll show you on the other side so you can kind of see it a little better there. But basically, you got a massager, heated seat, and then a USB hookup to charge your phone. Nice. So and you're really able to... Kick and you can also mouth. relax because if someone's not sitting, it doesn't flip. No. Oh, that was the only thing I was hoping for. You could put no, your beverage no. there. Tricking the camera lady on this model. Oh, I'm so sad. Most most of these couch models here, this centerpiece actually would fold down, even though it does recline. But this couch does not. But I'm so excited that it massages and. It eats. is actually a super nice feature. One can we get favorites. one for the office? That we have to talk to the big boss about. I'll get on that. All right, so next we're gonna have the fridge. They do have startup instructions down here as well. But basically up here, you got your on and off, and then your options of auto or gas. And gas, the only thing that, your only way you're gonna know is that if it's on on gas, or if it's operating on gas, 
is that if it doesn't fire on the propane, this check light will start flashing and it will start yelling at you, making a beep at you basically. Other than that, there is really no indication to show that it's flipped on in the propane unless you feel like going outside and trying to look. I always like to recommend auto. In auto, it is always looking for 110. So whenever you unhook from the main source of power, as long as the propane tanks are on, it will automatically swap over to propane. And then you also got the nice storage down here. Or There is quite a bit of storage in there. Basically, right here, you are able to adjust the temperature. And it's got a sticker here. Further down, it's going to make it warmer in here. Further up, will make it colder. And then you got your instruction manuals down there. All right, we'll go ahead and come over to this area real quick. We'll bounce back over to this side. Uh, so whenever you get to a new area, you do got to scan for channels. Basically, you're going to push the three lines. You're going to pull up your menu there. And you're going to go all the way to the end. Push OK to pull up settings. Then you're going to go down to channel. Channel source. Now from there, you're able to hit that again. It's going to ask you for antenna or cable. So right now we're using the antenna. If you're going to use the park cable here on the back side, right up there is where your booster is located. And there's a button up there, right there, that you have to push to turn that guy off. And it tells you on the front of this cover which ones, which way is on and which way is off. You turn that guy off and then you would go down to cable and start scanning for cable channels. If it's antenna, just hit OK. And then hit OK again and you're going to start scanning. Somehow, and I don't know how it happened, but I picked up 59 channels, which has never really happened in the area. Um, but those extra channels are barely coming in for some reason and I don't even know where they're from. I know I picked them up when it was storming one day, so I thought I just picked up some kind of frequency off of the clouds or something maybe or something. <laughs> but no, when I did another scan on a nice, good, sunny, clear day, I still got 59. Don't know how it happened, but they don't work. Uh, so that's doing its scan. Next, you're going to have your radio over here on the side. Uh, with this guy, push turn it on. Your little bass booster is over there, so you can tune that if you want some more oomph. To be a good so we got our inside speaker, which is zone two. Zone one is your outside speakers. And they get pretty loud. It does have a Bluetooth option. This guy here is the remote for this guy as well. Uh, another than that, this guy is pretty simple there. Auxiliary hookup. It's got a USB hookup, an HDMI hookup. If you just go to push this button, it's going to mute it. You got to press and actually hold it to turn it off. It'll tell you standby, and it will shut off. This light switch underneath here is for little ambiance lights up above. This guy here is going to be our air conditioner and slash for the heat. When you first turn this guy on, you do not have to jab the buttons. You just got to lightly press them. First, it's gonna show you fan. So you got high, low, and auto. I do like to always tell you to make sure that the fan is set in auto because if you go to turn your heat on and the fan is in auto or in high or low, the fan on the air conditioner will kick on with the furnace. I have seen in the wintertime where people would be calling saying their air conditioner's running while their furnace is running. It's not the air conditioner is running, it's just the fan, but it feels like the air conditioner because it's pulling in cold air from outside. Next, you're going to have air conditioner, shows you a snowflake. From there, you're able to set your temperature setting. And then your last one will be heat. Give you a little squiggly lines. And then once again, you would set your temperature. And then off. All right, as we come back here in the back, uh, basically right on this wall here is going to be the thermostat for just this air conditioner in the back. You got your light switches. This first one's going to be the ambiance lights. Your other one is your main lights. And then a hookup for your TV. 
Down below is where your fuse control panel box is located. Basically everything that runs off of sure power, so you have to be plugged in for it to work, or using the generator is gonna be on the breakers. Everything that runs off the battery is gonna be on the fuses, and they do have everything labeled for you for which one is which. All right, so this here is gonna be for the, uh, your last switch up there I didn't show you is gonna be for your adjustable bed base, where you can raise and lower the bed and the couches. I will tell you that we have got a separate attached video specifically on these guys that you can watch. So we're not going to really go over this guy in this this one. Just watch the attached video. Uh, basically, for our little doors here, you always want to make sure they're locked during travel. The other thing that you do need to make note is you do want to make sure that these glass panels are all in the down position during travel as well. If you have your upper ones up during travel, they're liable to work loose and fall and shatter. So make sure these are always in that down position. But then from there, you're able to just, well, once you unlock it, <laughs> you can pull them out, both sides open. And then you can actually pull this guy, this little guy right here. It releases the door so it can actually open up even more if you wanted it to. Low clearance. Watch your head. Let me tell you, for such a tall camper, for a lot of stuff, even this short guy hits his head on a lot of this. I seen stars the other day coming around that corner, so watch your bedroom slide. That's the best thing I can tell you. Pool noodles. Put some pool noodles on it. Pool noodles. Uh, you do have another fire extinguisher near this back door as well. Uh, as you see, I do have a ladder in here. That is the reason for that is because so I can reach the bathroom fan. Because once again, I had to open that guy so I could put our vent cover on. But it's way up there. Like I said, hopefully you got, you're tall, your friend's tall, or you're gonna need one of these guys. Go, go gadget arms. I just recommend a step stool. This makes it so much easier. Probably. <laughs> it does have a 110 outlet in here. Um, also inside there is where our pins are for our, these are the pins for our bed mechanism here. You'll then, meet them later. You'll meet them later. Uh, then you got your uh, toilet here as well. This they don't give you a lot of room, so I'm gonna kind of move this ladder back, step stool back just a little bit, and then I'm gonna steal the camera from the camera lady. Uh, right back there, that one's gonna be your bypass valve for the hot, and then there's one on the bottom. Let's see if we can see them, right there for the cold. As you see, they're gonna be fun to get to because I had a great time getting to them myself. Uh, right now, these are in the open position so that way uh, water can get into the water heater. When you go to winterize, you're gonna churn those lines where they're not in line, basically Sorry in line hand. with the water heater. All right, then as we come back around again, uh, you got your GFCI outlet here and here. Uh, basically, uh, this guy controls some these eyes over here. So if these guys ain't working, make sure this guy hasn't been tripped. Uh, other outlets through coach that ain't working, just come and see. Basically, that light will be popped on if it's been tripped. You got your uh, bag here with manuals for most of the appliances inside the coach. Uh, basically, if they're not in here, most of them have went online. These two items right here are going to be for your nice little air fryer oven that we're gonna talk about in a minute. This rack here is going to be for your convection oven microwave, which we're getting over to right now. I'll see now today, it only got 52 channels. And then we're gonna go over to done, because we're all done. And then back, and back again. So next with your microwave, it is a convection microwave. It does actually have you some, a little bit of cooking guides down here. Uh, I do always like to set, I recommend that you set the clock. You guys go out, you see the clock is not the same when you come back. That tells you that there was a power failure at the campsite. You want to look and see if that was from the campsite itself or the uh, electric company. Uh, a lot of times when there are uh, larger campgrounds, there's going to be more campers there and you're liable to experience like surges. Well, surges can damage campers if you're not careful. So it would not hurt to look into a, getting a surge detector. 
um, but try not to get a, a a cheaper one. And cheaper ones usually are 100 to 200 dollars. You want to spend the money and get you a good surge protector. That Oops. wind is being rather aggressive today. All right, so next you're going to have your stove. One thing to note is this is not a glass stove top, and this guy here just tells you kind of basically to flip and flip. And then from there, you would just turn this guy to that light position. Turn till it lights. It probably won't stay long because I don't think I left the propane on. So that guy will probably run for about 8 to 10 seconds maybe, and then it might start dying down. Or maybe I did leave the propane on. Maybe I did leave the propane on. You got two different lights. Lights up this guy up here. The other one lights this up, and then the light for the air fryer, or oven fryer, oven air fryer. <laughs> All right, so for that, that's going to be right over here on this side. You do have to be plugged in to sure power for this. The stove is gas only, but the oven is, you got to have 110. And then from there, you're just going to turn it to what you want. And that fan's already going inside. Already doing what it's got to do. Kicking up speed. Sounding like a jet engine. Ready to go. I'm not going to lie to you. Very big fan of this. I'm Very big really fan. excited about it. I honestly, I'd never, I talked about, I would never put it in a, in a cabin that I have and, or my shed. If I could get my hands on one of these, I'd probably be putting one in. I totally want one. I'm not trying to put, no, I'm, it, I'm not trying to run gas lines into my shed. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> yep. Uh, then you got your sink here. Um, another USB, or USB, 110. Down by here is where your carbon monoxide and LP detector is. This sticker here is to tell you that you want to test this every 7 to 14 days. To perform that test, you're simply going to push this button. And it'll beep again, just like that. And it's going to give us a different style of beep. And that's all there is for that test. The reason why you would test that, make sure that it is working, is so that if that guy goes off, it's potentially sen sensing either carbon monoxide or propane in the coach. Uh, generally, if it does start going off, you do want to take emergency precautions by the first person getting out of this coach needs to turn off the propane canisters, okay? The next person needs to be trying to get anything that breathes out of the coach and trying to open some windows. We are not trying to open vents. We're not trying to turn vent fans on. We're not trying to create an electrical spark, okay? And then we're going to get 50 feet away for at least 15 minutes. After that time frame, one person is going to come back inside, and I always recommend telling them to first check the stove. The reason why is because these knobs are on the outside, and somebody could just be pushed back, leaning against it. They just slide around, do things like that, but I already started to push this, turn this knob. Some knobs turn butts, or some butts turn knobs. Scratch that, reverse it. <laughs> uh, but that usually is one of the bigger culprits for that. Uh, if that's the case, you're going to be good. Um, but you notice it ain't this. You turn it back on, it does start going off again. You do want to turn off the propane and have it serviced and looked at because there is something going on inside the coach. Now, with that being said, there are other things that can cause this to go off, such as cleaning chemicals, hairspray, and animal gases, okay? So please be mindful of that, okay, as well. Uh, you do also have storage on the side. I didn't really show you that, but you got storage down here. Uh, you got drawers underneath the uh, sink area here as well. And then from there, I like to say we have basically made our way back to the door. Uh, hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you guys. If you do have any questions, please feel free to call us over the phone and we do our best to answer those questions for you. Thank you and have a wonderful day.